to run. RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences Canada. Redefining herbicide performance so growers can spray when they need to. Welcome to uh, RealAgriculture.com and today we're starting a brand new feature called the Dow AgroSciences Canada Tech Tour. We'll be focusing mm. on new products, new innovations, trying to yeah. create more efficiency and create more time on the farm. We're yes. joined today by... Steve LaRock, Beyond Agronomy. I'm based out of Three Hills, Alberta. I also farm by north of Drumheller, more in Alberta. And uh, we were at AgriTrade in Red Deer, day one, lots of energy. Things are really hopping here. Things are hopping here. Yeah, I, uh, I've been 200 feet inside the door and I've made it here, I've been here three hours. <laughs> okay, Steve, so on the tech tour, we're really gonna focus on uh, creating more time for farmers. And you're yeah. kind of, a, you're a very unique situation. Oh, I'm uh, unique. And it's not just your personality. Uh, it's the fact that you farm, but yeah. you also have an agronomy business that yeah. uh, a lot of people know about. You're beyond agronomy on Twitter, for those uh, people that don't know. and. Yep. You have a unique perspective where uh, you get a lot of feedback from your customers and yep. probably thoughts in your own head about yep. creating more time. Yep. And the farmer spends more time than ever yep. in the sprayer. Like yes. We are like, we're, yeah. of all the pieces of machinery, that's yep. the one we're spending our time. We're married to the sprayer nowadays. It just seems we just, every year, there's just more and more work to do with the sprayer. Yeah, it's so, incredible. And, and so is that a first, like, the feedback from your customers and yourself, is yeah. that becoming a stress point or is it a frustration that, man, I'm, I'm like constantly out here yeah. ripping through the field? It's true. We, you know what, I think we, we've just reached that point. In the last two years, you've, I've seen that change where we're now scaled out, as in we are married to that sprayer. There's a lot of work to do. You're going from pre-burn, you're going right into you know, in-crop herbicide, you might apply a second herbicide, then you're into a fungicide, then you're into pre-harvest. Like you are throwing a lot of hours on those machines every year. So right now, it's not like we're looking for extra jobs to do with the sprayer, but you know what? That's probably where the biggest opportunities lie right. is in foliar applications of you know extra passes of PGR. You know, uh, it could be top dress nitrogen or stream nitrogen. You know, extra foliar micronutrients or whatever, whatever you know foliar applications you can do to to improve and and take advantage of you know the in season variability. You know, all of a sudden, you know what? I could use nitrogen or I could use an extra fungicide. I do need a, a PGR. There's a lot of work to do with the sprayer, but we're already tapped out. So where where do you find the efficiencies? So that's where I find that's where we're at right now. So on that yeah. point, so what, like, yeah. what are some of the solutions, right? So is it yeah. widening the spray window? Like, yeah. what, what are what are some of the things that we can do? Do you think in your well, experience? Right now, it, yeah, so so much of the herbicide. We talk about herbicides in general. So much of the herbicides we do are in season, and it is hard to find efficiencies. Yeah, we've moved to like three inch lines, we got bigger pumps, bigger handling systems, you know, we can we can load in eight minutes where it took us 20 minutes before. So we've kind of tapped into those efficiencies already, it's just where to go from here. So now we've moved into, you know, broadcast applications. So all of a sudden, you know, we might apply a granular herbicide in the fall uh, to spread out that window. We're already heavy harrowing. I mean, a Valmar, I mean, it's only $13,000, but you yeah. know what I mean? You're already out there with the pass doing your heavy harrow work. You may as well be applying a herbicide. So that's stretching out the herbicide window. And then even on a foliar side, because we've got like things like liquid wild oak herbicides, we can actually apply with glyphosate yeah. while we're doing a pre like a pre burn prior to seeding. So do you think granular is so, making a comeback? Oh, massive. Massive, because a lot of the a lot of the granular herbicides are different groups, right? Right. You got okay. group threes, you got group eights, and we're relying on ones and twos and ones and twos with foliar, right? Group yeah. ones, group twos, group ones, group twos. Like that is those are two bullets we're working with, right? We need at least three or four to balance our herbicide resistance program, and that's where you see the resurgence. I've seen a huge, mainly because I'm recommending it, yeah. but. I see a big resurgence in yeah all your granular herbicides and that's stretching out the window, giving us another herbicide group to tackle resistance management. Yeah, it's you, perfect. And you're, you're somebody that is, uh, you, you try to push the envelope, like you're, you're, tr you're trying to yeah. be innovative, right? Yeah. And provide a whole bunch of different solutions, just not one solution to the grower. Yeah. Are you getting excited about the environment? So, not that the situation yeah. we're in is bad, it's not, it's not good, but we're, yeah. it's really opened up the opportunity to be innovative again with our, how we're taking care of our, our you know crop what? production. Absolutely, you know, we, we've run into a really good run of years. I mean, we've had good rainfall, we've had really good prices. I mean, margins are very good. So we, we've got that extra money to, you know, to take on added risk. So I don't mind applying another 60 pounds of nitrogen in crop to bring me to 150 pounds of nitrogen, which you would never think of, you know, five or even 10 years ago, because that's, I mean, that's your margin, right? You're throwing on the line, so it better work. Whereas now we've got a little bit of money to play with, so 
Yeah, we're starting to, we've got a nitrogen side dress toolbar. So we're disking in nitrogen between the rows in season. So like brutal nitrogen efficiency, right? You put it in the ground in the right form, the right time, the right place. It's, uh, there's lots of things we can start to do uh, and be innovative with because there's still a lot of, a lot of problems to solve, right? Oh, no, when we solve one problem, we find three more. Yeah, or there's three more opportunities, yeah. right? And for guys like myself, yeah, yeah. we're just kind of geared that way. Right. So all of a sudden, yeah, I'm, I'm out there with my side dress toolbar. I like flag leaf and wheat, uh, side dressing nitrogen, and all of a sudden, well, I could be seeding a cover crop at the same time. Right. I could be spraying a fungicide at the same time. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I could do three things in one pass. Well, and with spraying, creating yeah. more time, you know, it, it's, mm. it's so much cheaper than having to buy another unit or have another man to run that unit. Like, it's yeah. just, it, 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 yep. it really does make sense to have more time. It does, and I, I don't know where we're gonna squeak it out of. Whether like how wide can we go, right? Because yeah. that's the next, that's the next push. I guess everyone's kind of moved from a 90 foot to 100 foot to 120 foot boom. So where do we go next? Do we go 140? Do we go 160? Yeah. Well, then you start running into diseconomies, right? Yeah. We've had that whole discussion about grain carts. So where? Uh, 1,300 yeah. bushel grain cart. Like. Well, now we're 1,800, 2,200 bushel grain carts. Yeah. Like we've got semis moving down the field with tractors that probably shouldn't be pulling them, but. Yeah. but you know what? That's just the way we're headed. Is is scale, and I, and I think scale is, scale is one thing, but it's not the only thing, right? There's there's ways to make money, and there's you can intensify, or you can scale. If you can marry the two, I think you're going to win, yeah. right? Because if you rely totally on scale, it's great when you're making 100 bucks an acre, but it's horrible when you're losing yeah. 100 bucks an acre. Well, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, wh yeah. where does CTF control or controlled oh. traffic farming fit into efficiency? Uh, a, where, oh. In your mind, where does it? Yeah. In terms of efficiency, like like pass to pass efficiency, because you're running down the same tram lines every year, you know all your gear is matched. Like I plant, let's say we plant 60 rows, you know we spray 60 rows, we harvest 60 rows. Like every pass, every pass that we do is 99% efficient. And with CTF system and some of the things we're doing, you know we're able to keep our stubble height really tall, so we can keep our wheat height, you know, 18 inches tall, even with a you know a rigid header, um, not with a stripper header. And all of a sudden, we're bumping up our harvest speeds by, you know, a mile and a half, two miles an hour. And in wheat this year, that worked out to about $3,500 an hour more to harvest at 18 inches versus dropping down to 8 inches. Because sometimes I had to go down for that crop that was lodging for a while. So I pick it up and you're down to like two miles an hour. And then you bop up to 18 inches and all of a sudden you're doing four mile an hour. That's a huge difference with efficiency. With, with farms getting larger, do you yep. think efficiency is getting, or finding efficiency is getting tougher? Because we're, yeah. you know. With well, I think, yeah, because it's difficult to have a, have a perfect, like, if I'm going to scale out, I'm going to scale it to 5,000. And then my next move, I want to go to 10. No, it's actually going to be 5, and then 65, and then 85. And everybody seems to be in between that sweet spot, right? So You're either too the, big or too small. There's a lot of diseconomies of scale going on right now where yeah. people can't get out there in a timely fashion that they want to. So we have to think about how we intensify, right? Because if you're out there, again, margins are good. So if, even if you're not there on time and you're not there in a timely fashion and you know what, disease is probably a little bit more than you would have liked, you would have got there if you were a bit yeah. smaller. But uh, Well, hey, quality of the workforce too, right? So if you're implementing yeah. new innovations and new technologies, I'll tell yep. you what, as that farm gets bigger, yep. it becomes more difficult to sometimes implement oh, some of those like, cutting edge things that we're going to feature in the tech. I know, because how do you stick someone in the cab? And you know what? And I think all my clients are there, right? Yeah. They, I mean, they're running logistics. They're not in the combines, but they're, they're putting people in the combines. Yeah. But I think that a lot of the workforce that many of them are relying on are either really young or like they're lifting them up into the cab for the day. Because they're the ones that know how to run the technology. <laughs> Barely. Like, they know how to run the machine, but you start playing with yield monitors and technology and GPS, yeah. they're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. whoa. <laughs> so there's a disconnect right now that we're going to have to jump over, yeah. jump over that hurdle with, you know, how do you teach the old guys uh, the technology and the young guys know the technology, but how do you teach them to run the equipment? Yeah. You know what? So Big challenge. Oh, massive. But. Well, Steve, thanks for joining us for episode one of the Tech Tour. It's Fantastic. great to have you. It's, yeah. You're always awesome. I awesome, appreciate yeah. you taking the time. You're very busy here. So, no, I appreciate that. Uh, well, Many also time. thanks uh, Dalgo Sciences Canada for the yep. sponsor of the Tech Tour. And, uh, thanks, thanks for the support, again. Dal. Thanks. Thanks, Steve.